This is the welcome block. And this one's going to be done in a six by 10 hoop. So I know the instructions tell you that you're gonna be working in the six by 10 hoop for all of these, but not if you're gonna be combining your quilting with your embroidery, meaning pre-quilting the background and then adding uh, the embroidery later. So if you're gonna be putting those two things together, you've gotta to go up in size just the tiniest bit. So I'm gonna show you the instructions for the quilting and how to put it all together and make it make sense. So these are the quilting instructions. And so what you need to do is you need to go over here. Here's your applique blocks. And you need to find your trim size. So if you look at this one right here, which is the very first block that we're going to do, your trim size is going to be um, right here. So your trim size is going to measure four and a half by eight and a half. That means you're gonna look at this row. This is your embroidery field. And this is going to be the size, uh, your embroidery field. So this is gonna six, fit into our six because 4.5 is less than six by 10, so eight and a half. When we do the other blocks, because your two side blocks, the one all the way to the left and the one all the way to the right, they're gonna be this size. When we do the next blocks, they're gonna be six and a half by eight and a half, which means you have to bump up to either a seven by 12, a nine and a half by nine and a half, or an eight by 12, or any size that's bigger, but these are gonna be the best ones that will fit. This gives you all your instructions as to how big to cut your um, backing fabric, how big to cut your batting, what your finished size is going to be and what the file name is. So I already have my uh, backing fabric that's cut. This is going to be the um, six and a half. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, six and a half by ten and a half. That's the size. And then my batting, I'm going to cut it to five by nine. And this is the file size that we're gonna we're gonna put in. So let's. I have everything prepped. Let's go over to the machine. I'll show you how to load it. So let's go ahead and add our design. We're gonna go in here to the pocket. I'm gonna go to my USB, and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in my quilting design. It's PES, and remember, when we're looking at the chart, your size that you're looking for is the four by eight. So let's go ahead and find the four by eight. We're gonna go ahead and set it, and we're going to hit embroidery. Oh, sorry, before you hit embroidery, let's hit add. So we're going to hit add. We're going to go back here to the pocket, our USB, and now we're going to add the embroidery design on top of the quilting. And the first one we're going to do, and it does not go in order, so don't load this one first. We're looking for welcome, and it's the one with the bicycle. It's not the one with the swing. It's the one with the bicycle. Hit set. If you don't move it anywhere, it's going to come right in center, right on top of the quilting. Now we're ready. We're going to hit embroidery. All right, let's go through our set directions. And we're going to go through our directions with, um, with the quilting first. So grab your quilting directions. And the first thing it wants to do is it wants to stitch the batting placement line. I've been doing all of mine with my Deco Bob my white deco bob cuz my white deco bob is going to be what I'm going to be using for my quilting too. So here's my deco bob. The reason I'm using my deco bob is because it is an 80 weight. It's a little bit thinner. Not sure if I'm going to love it as much as I would the regular size, but um it you're going to see the quilting but it's not going to be at, it's not going to stand out quite as much as it would if I was um if I was using the regular 48 thread because it's a 60 weight. So hang on. And we are threaded and ready to go. First thing, so let's look at our steps here for the quilting is stitch the batting placement line. Then we're going to place the batting. Then we're going to tack it down and then we're going to trim it. So we're going to do that's all step one. So first is my placement line. I'm going to grab my batting. It's going to be the five by nine piece. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray to the back. Remember, your batting has a right side and a wrong side. The wrong side is the nubby side. 
the right side is the dimpled side and it's gonna be smoother. So smoother on this side, uh, kind of dimply on the other side. I know it's hard to see because I'm doing white on cream. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take this and lay it down. You wanna make sure you're covering the entire thing. All right, oops, am I covering this side? I sure am. Let's go ahead and now you're gonna go ahead and stitch it down. Get your applique scissors because we're gonna trim after this. I have two pairs of double curve that I love. I'm just gonna use my bigger pair. I think they're called six inch double curved. You have one curve to go over the hoop edge and you have another curve to go away from the fabric underneath so you don't accidentally cut into it. So that was the tack down, which is 1C. Now we're gonna do the trim, which is 1D. So I'm gonna move this a little bit out of the way so I can go ahead and trim. And a lot of times if I can, I will just trim in the hoop, meaning, um, or like without removing the hoop from the machine. And you wanna trim right to that stitch I'm gonna just hold that up. I know this batting is just a little fluffy. There we go. Okay, let's look at step two, our next set of directions. So now what it wants you to do is it wants you to stitch the fabric placement line. This is for your backing, which is the blue textured fabric. Then we're going to place the background fabric right side up, completely covering the placement line. Tape in place. I'm going to be spraying it, so I'm not going to be taping it. You're going to stitch the fabric basting stitch. This is going to be your tack down. It is not the cut line. And then we're going to leave our white in. This is why I have my white in, because then you're going to do the background quilting. So let's do the placement line first. Ready? I'm just going to hit start. 
And I'm using muslin instead of no-show mesh. I just like the way it feels. I feel like it's more pliable. Anytime I can use muslin instead um, of no-show mesh, a lot of times I do do that. I'm gonna give my um, backing a little shot of spray. I have the Shape Flex, whoops, look at that. My hair gets on everything. Um, I have Shape Flex on the back of this. I didn't even go all the way to the edge uh, just because, um, just because you don't need it. And if you notice, this is actually two pieces because this is the second time I'm doing this. It's, I kind of, that was kind of a dry run and I made some mistakes. So this was just leftover fabric. You're not going to notice when I stitch it all, uh, when it gets all stitched. So, um, that is my background fabric. Just in case you were wondering. All right. So I'm going to lay this down. And this is a little wider than six by 10. So don't worry about it if, it if it looks wider than yours. Remember, I was just using remnants. What I like to do is I like to fold it in half hamburger, meaning this would be hot dog, long and skinny is hot dog, short and fat is hamburger. And I am just going to line this up. Let me back up a little bit so you can see this. This is my center line right here. So I'm gonna line this up with my center line and just make sure I'm centered in the hoop, which I am. And then I can just fold it back. And again, like I said, this one's gonna be a little wider than what you have. And we are good to go. So step, that was step um, 2B, laying it down. Step 2C is the basting stitch tack down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And don't be worried if yours isn't quite as wide as mine. Again, this is um, my second time doing this. So I'm just using some remnants. And then after you do this, now you're going to do step 2D, which is to do the quilting background. So just let it stitch and you could do this in variegated thread you could do this in regular weight 40 weight thread which would make it just stand out a little bit more Doesn't that look adorable? And what you're going to get ready is you are going to get your, where is it? your avocado green piece of felt. I don't know. So would that be the color? It's maybe lime. And um, you need the thread that you're going to use for the tree. And 
the thread that you're going to be using for the um, leaves. That's all stuff that's up and coming. done with the quilting section so now we're going to go to the applique embroidery instructions and what you need to keep in mind is step one and two is to stitch the background uh, placement line and then you're going to do the tack down we're skipping these so in each step if you're doing the the quilting like we just did you're going to be skipping steps one and two and we're gonna go right to step three because we already have our backing fabric down. So step three is gonna be stitch the tree trunk fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my brown, my light brown in. Let's put this in. And it's going to do the tree trunk fill. So go ahead and just hit start. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the problem. I always say that. So um, did you see it's going to hit that? That's going to be the background placement line. So I told you to skip it, but then I didn't actually go through the instructions and skip it. I'm just going to pull that out if I can. I should have noticed because it was there. Okay, ready? We are going to go ahead and... Let's skip it. So I'm going to go back to where it would have been. Okay. So let's skip those two steps that I told you to skip. So if you look really close, there's a placement line right on the bottom. I'm going to fast forward. This is going to go forward and I'm going to skip it. This is my step two, which is going to be the background fabric tack down. I'm going to skip that. And there we go. There's the tree. So let's go ahead and hit start. And now we're right where we should be.
pretty cute tree. So um, after we do the tree, it wants to do, we're on step four now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my thread out. And I like to show people this, um, and I showed it at the end too, but I do not cut my thread here and pull down, or I'm sorry, I do not cut it up by this bowl and pull down. What I do is I take my thread and I unthread it. So I take it out of here and out of here and right to here, I just pull it out. So you don't want to drag your thread past that, like you don't want to pull back. That's how thread gets wound around your attention disc in the upper. But you can just unthread it and then right here just kind of, it'll just, you'll feel there'll be absolutely no tension at all. Okay, so I'm going to be using this color for my placement line and my tack down. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. The thing that's going to take the longest is going to be with this design is cutting our fabric. Oh, I just can't do that. That's so much thread. Hang on. Let me go ahead and take this out and wind this up a little bit. Put it here. So this is step uh, four, stitch the leaves placement line. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to start it and then I'm going to stop it because this step takes a while. It's going to do every single leaf. It's going to cut every single leaf. And once you know where one of them is, you don't really need to do all of them. So I'm just going to let it do this next leaf and I'm going to stop it. By all means, don't let me influence you. But those leaves are going to be centered on the tree. So if we just put our felt down with it a little bit below those bottom two leaves and center it, um, you're going to be able to uh, know where your felt goes. If you want to do all of them, please do all of them. But I'm stopping right there. I'm going to go ahead and... Go to my instruct or my stitches right here. This is going to go forward to the next color. This will go to the beginning of what we're on right now. I'm just going to hit this and make sure you don't do it with your thread uncut because it's going to drag your thread around. Once you've cut it or it's done the cut, you've stopped it. I'm just going to go forward. See how it's going to stitch over those all over again. And let me show you how I'm going to place it. And I did this for the other tree too. I tried to stitch it and I just couldn't take it. I was like, this is going to take so long. So I sprayed the back of my felt. Going to bring that forward. This is my center line right here on the tree. I'm just going to fold it like this. I'm going to go a little bit below that and I'm just going to fold it open. And you just need to trust, but that will, that will cover all of your leaves, okay? If you're uncomfortable with that, do your entire placement line. And now this is my tack down. That's going to save you, I mean, I think that whole stitch out, I can't remember how long it took, but it was going to take a long time. That's going to save you quite a while because it's doing every single leaf and then it's cutting.
And let's get your applique scissors and get ready to trim this up. Wasn't that so much better than having to stitch all the placement lines? Um, now you can just do your tack down. I guess just be careful and make sure you have enough fabric um, down on this bottom side. You're going to see I had quite a bit on the top. I'm going to take my hoop out and I'm going to take it to where I do my pressing and trim it because we're going to be turning this quite a bit. So let's go over to my pressing and uh, hooping area. So I like to use these scissors. They're a single curve over the hoop and then straight. I don't like using the double curve when I'm trimming because, you know, sometimes it'll cut, it'll cut in a curve. So these are my favorite and you can trim this any way you want, but I'm going to trim it with a little bit, like not right at that stitch. And what I like to do is cut all of these on the left hand side and then I'll swing around and I'll do all my right hand cuts. So I feel like I'm being efficient. I want you to cut it however you want to cut it. If you want to do each leaf separately. Can swing it this way. Kind of make your way around however you want.
Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, I'm going to warn you right now. And all the stuff I'm warning you about are things that I did. And I uh, want to make sure I don't do them again in this video. Because this, like I said, is my second time around. We're going to do some pressing because we're going to press the rocket. Make sure you don't press the leaves because the leaves are nice and fluffy and uh, just so pretty. If you press them, they get super flat. So I just wanted to let you know, warning right now, do not press them. So we've gone ahead and cut them out, um, cut felt in half. I didn't cut my felt in half, but you saw that I did cut it as I went. And now we're going to stitch the bike tire fill. Um, so let's go back to the machine. So my hoop is on. I'm going to go ahead and change out to black. When I did it before, you didn't I didn't have any bobbin thread pulling up, so you can just leave that. And go ahead and stitch out. I forgot to put my little lever down. Stitch out the tires. After the tires, are going to be the bike tire spokes. And I'm gonna do that in a uh, medium gray. I'm gonna go in with this next. Alrighty, let's go ahead. It's step seven. We're going to take out your black thread and we're going to put in the gray. It's going to do the spire, the, sorry, not the spire, but the tire spokes. I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's put my gray up here. After the tires, we're going to be doing the bike frame fill, then the bike seat and handle fill, then the bike pedal detail, and the bike basket detail. So all of those, and it shows you, it gives you a picture here of all the different parts that it's going to be doing. So I love this because number eight is here, and then you can, it points to what you're going to be doing. So um, now we are on, let me get that to refocus. Now we're on step number eight, and this is going to be your bike frame fill. I'm going to be doing it in gold. Let me take out my gray. And let's put the gold in. And after you do this, then it's going to be the red for the seat and the handlebars.
ahead and line this up. Let's do our red next. All right, and let's go ahead, do our handlebars. And then we're gonna do the seat. So we're going to do the bike pedal and then the bike basket. I'm putting my medium gray back in, pedal and basket. So a lot of times I do these videos, um, I do them on my Luminaire. But if I was just stitching for me, I would most likely be on my multi-needle because um, I don't have to re-thread. I can just put all my main colors up there and just send my needle wherever I want it to be, wherever I want it to be. So that is the bike pedal. I'm just going to go ahead and hit start again, and this is going to be for the basket. And we are almost done with our bike. How cute is that? All right, so if you look at these instructions right here, if you were using a five by seven hoop, you would do these steps. But since we're in a six by 10, we are gonna go ahead and pass all of these steps and go down to here. And um, right here, six by 10 instructions. So we are gonna go ahead and stitch the rocket fuse detail, that's the little stuff that comes out of the bottom of the rocket, and then with the rocket spark detail, it calls for red and white. I'm doing, anytime we do these steps, because these are gonna repeat over and over again, I'm gonna do it in my red um, King Star Metallic, and I'm gonna use this, my silver King Star uh, Metallic for these two steps. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna put in my red King Star Sometimes um, if you're using your horizontal spool pin and you're not using a spool cap, you have to be careful with your metallic thread because it, the way it unspools, it will jump. And I've had it get wrapped around the base of my spool pin. I might even have it um, on video doing that. Okay, here is, and I'm going to have to trim that little loop that got stitched in. So that's going to be, I think I'm going to grab that loop right now, so I don't have to do it later. Oh. Okay. All right, now I'm going to put in my silver king star instead of the white. And you want to get your red glitter and your white glitter ready to go. Don't forget to peel off that special, um, the covering. So you want to make sure you peel away the plastic covering. Isn't that so cute? I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. Can I get any closer? It's so cute. 
All righty. So we are done with these two steps right here. Now it wants you to stitch the rocket body placement line. We're doing that in red. But when you lay down your glitter, you're laying down the white. When I did it the first time, I laid down the wrong color because I thought red would go with red and white would go with white. And it is not that way. So I'm going to take out my silver glitter and I'm going to put in my red thread. Where are you? There you go. Could not find the end of my thread. Here's my, and I'm using just regular red thread. This is for the applique. Okay, placement line. Again, peel away the protective coating, the carrier for this. I just used, I know it, they gave you, or you were supposed to cut six pieces. I literally used one piece for the whole thing. So, um, and now I have a lot of glitter pieces left over. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this down right here. You can tape it down if you want. I'm just going to hold mine down. If you don't, if you're not confident in your skills of holding it down, by all means, I was a little close on that top, but it's okay. That top's gonna get covered over. Wants you to trim away. And you can trim it however you want. Mine's trimmed up. While you're doing this, go ahead and turn on your iron. You are going to be pressing this down, so turn your iron on right now. And um, now it wants you to switch to white. So I'm going to go ahead and put my white thread in. It's going to do a placement stitch for the tip of the rocket. slide my hoop back on and you can see I cut into it for one of my tips pull that down if it was a big piece of glitter I would be taping it down because I feel like glitter can shift. But this is so tiny. I'm just going to hold it to start. Okay, we are going to trim that up. Your iron should be heating up right now. You want your iron to be heating up right now because we are going to press this down. And remember, when we press, we're going to be really careful not to press those leaves You want to press those leaves down. And the first time I did my rocket, I put um, the red down on the body of the rocket and the white down on the tip. And I was like, that's not right. So I'm going to slide this off. You want a Teflon sheet too. You don't want to press right on your glitter. I'm going to take this out. Bring it to you. Here we go. I'm trying to, I always try to move everything around so you don't see the big mess that's surrounding me. Okay, don't press this. I'm going to put this right on top of the rocket so I'm not tempted to come over here and press that. And be careful not to put your iron. You need a small iron because you don't want to, uh, that feels great. You don't want to put your iron on the edges of your hoop too. So we are done with that. I'm going to slide this back on to my machine. Let's come on back over here. 
Pretty slick, huh? And um, now that we press that, here's my note. Don't press the felt leaves. We're gonna stitch the white stars and firework explosions and then the red. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and put silver in for white and I'm gonna put red metallic. I'm doing my metallic threads for both step 18 and 19. So first it wants white, so I'm gonna put in silver. Accidentally let go of the tip. You might want to slow it down. I had a little bit of breakage. I'm just going to kind of go for it. We'll see. I'm all about just trying it. If I breakage, we'll go ahead and slow it down then. Okay, I'm going to stop just because I can hear it. Did you hear that? I was just shredding. I'm going to cut first. Seems Something happened there. I don't know if it caught my bobbin thread. Trust your mama ears if it doesn't sound right. It's probably not. And I'm getting close to the end here, you know. It was stuck on the bottom. So I'm just going to toss this. I'm going to get a brand new bobbin. If you are using pre-wounds every once in a while, they'll get stuck on the bottom where they're, where it starts. Okay. I'm going to go back a couple stitches. It did not sound right to me though, so... Glad I stopped it. All right, so we're gonna hit this button and I'm just gonna hit it back until it goes to here. And I know that I'm in the right spot. All right, let's go ahead and I'll just start it there. Oh, actually, sorry about that. That was actually going the wrong direction. That's why it didn't look right to me. Okay. There we go. Let's try it there. Okay.
Okay, so after that, it calls for gold. I'm going to put my gold king star in. And after the gold is going to the is going to be the blue for the eyelets. And then I'm going to show you how to press it. So make sure your iron stays nice and warm and you have some best press. I'm finishing up the gold and I'm actually redoing some of it because my um, sewing room is like a, like it's how everyone gets in and out of the house. So everyone just got home and um, they were bringing in groceries and I thought I had finished the gold and I changed to navy, but I hadn't finished the gold. So anyways, I'm, I'm going back and fixing it right now. After you finish the gold, which I'm doing right now, then you're going to put in the blue, whatever blue you want to put in to do the eyelets. And we're almost done. Heat up that iron, get your breast press because we are going to press and trim.
Let's go ahead and put that navy in. Now is the right time. I'm using a, you know, darker blue kind of goes with the fabric, background fabric. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six eyelets. Alrighty, that's our embroidery. Let's go ahead and take it out. First thing we are going to do is we are going to press. We're going to be careful, though, not to press uh, those leaves too much. And I'm going to take us back over here. I'm going to put this at this angle. That way I'll have some room where I'm not struggling. Okay, so here is our project. I'm going to pop it out of the hoop. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press it. I'm going to press it from behind and I'm going to try and avoid those leaves as much as possible. And I'm going to press it into my wool mat using my best press. All righty. You do get some rippling and there's some pulling. So you get a little bit of pulling, those leaves will pull, um, and all the embroidery will kind of kind of pull your embroidery in a little bit. I'm just gonna give it a quick press right there, but not too, too hard. I don't wanna flatten it. What I really wanna do is I wanna get the ripples out of the fabric, because it kind of goes like this. I push down I really do um, if there was if it was super directional I felt like it was going to uh, really distort it I wouldn't I'd be pressing more but for stuff like this if I can I will iron okay so it looks really really good I'm gonna grab my rotating mat now so you want a I have a 12 by 12 rotating mat I also have a 17 by 17 which I really like to use too this is big enough for this so I'm going to show you how you lay this down. I'm going to do it in your direction. They want you to use both a four and a half by six and a half and a six and a half by um, eight and a half. And the directions tell you to go ahead and take out that basting stitch that's around here. I'm not going to do that. And the reason I'm not going to do it is because when I did my first one and I did as per their instructions, and I'll show you from the back side. 
I went ahead and um, I did measure down because you're going to see the instructions here tell you to measure about um, ruler nested together place rulers with bike tires a quarter inch above the ruler the inner bottom edge of the large ruler when I did this I was really askew like right here you can see this is where our batting is if you look at that inner line where I'm running my fingernail my batting is in there but when I did that and I went a quarter inch below right here there was um and we trimmed it I had way more fabric up here than here so I think it's better to just take it and center it to your batting and center it to your um, design so I did that instead and it was more even when I sewed it in I had a little bit of batting inside um, your quarter inch it's it's not gonna be perfect like if you look at this you're gonna see I have a little like an eighth of an inch below here and an eighth of an inch below here if you line it up this way you're gonna have a lot of fabric here and you're not gonna have as much down here and you're gonna be sewing some of that batting in it's just me you can do whatever you want um, but I am gonna go ahead I'll show you a little bit clearer I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to line up the edges of this so there is an equal amount above that stitching and an equal amount below that stitching then I'm gonna put this in here you can cut from the back or the front and the other reason I didn't take out that basting stitch is it's just gonna get sewn in so why waste the time don't take out that basting stitch just leave it in there you'll either cut it so now I know I'm an equal amount you can kind of center it I'm just outside that outer edge I'm just outside this outer edge let me get in really close so you can see that hang on there you go I'm a little bit outside of that outer edge and a little bit outside of that outer edge and then if you look at the bottom and I lift this up you're gonna see I'm probably about an eighth of an inch there and if you look at the top I'm probably about an eighth of an inch above that that's how I decided to do it if you don't like that then just follow as per the instructions um, but I thought that was most even and I'm just gonna move it back over a little bit can you hear my guard dog barking out there I'm gonna turn this a little bit so you can choose to have it more lined up with these the lines on the sides or the lines on the top and the bottom I'm going top and bottom okay we're good I'm gonna get my there's a lot of action going on here at the Mulligans so I'm gonna do a cut up here and a cut down here then I'm gonna take out this inner ruler and you kind of have to choose are you gonna be more lined up on the sides or are you gonna be more lined up I'm gonna hold this down as I turn more lined up on the sides or more lined up top and bottom okay so I have those two cuts now I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna cut top and bottom I'm gonna hold this rotate the whole thing if you just swing it I find that it moves and there we go you're gonna have to extend these cuts so you have to extend them right here and right here let me get my um, other ruler There we go perfect and then I'm going to two more cuts and then we're done and that's how I do it I don't know um, if it makes you uncomfortable straying from the instructions I just found that that was the most uh, accurate way I could get my squares and look how good it looks so the, uh, the again there's that basting stitch so you're gonna see I'm pretty equal on um, the top part and the bottom part about an eighth of an inch 
and then um, I'm just right outside of the stitching on the left and the right and I thought that was going to be the best way to do the cutting so just leave that basting stitch in there okay we're ready to move on to the next one